So first question for you guys here. Um, for those uh, people who are sort of new to eating a plant-based diet, uh, what tips do you guys have for achieving long-term success? Because it can be a big change from you know the way that they've been eating over the course of time. So what can people do to make sure that they, they make the habit change and it sticks with them in the long term? Well, I'm a really big fan of uh, small steps to habit change. Like really just taking the smallest possible step you can. I think so many of us... Uh, well, I know I have made the mistake of just assuming that we're going to make a change. We get all inspired. Then we say, that's it. Tomorrow, everything changes. Or right now in this instant, I'm, you know, flipping the switch. And for now on, everything's going to be different. And I'm going to start exercising and also and meditating and doing all these things. And that usually lasts a day, two days. It's not even less than that. It just, it just doesn't last. Uh, so a diet change, even by itself, is, is a huge endeavor. Uh, so to just go plant-based overnight or something like that, I mean, there are people who make that work. And, and, you know, it, it's possible that you'll see the results fast enough that, like, that kind of snowballs and you get excited. Um, but, you know, there's, there's a big drain on your willpower when you change something like your diet. So I'm a huge fan of, of kind of uh, really finding, like, the very smallest step you can. I have a good friend. His name is Sid Garza Hillman. He does, uh, you know, like nutrition counseling for people. And uh, he, he actually starts people by just, like, adding a stalk of celery to their diet or, or literally eating, drinking a glass of water first thing. Like the smallest possible change you can you can make just to kind of start keeping a promise to yourself, um, you know, very something that you can't possibly fail at. So you can do more than that, I think. But but to me, I think like you're a lot better off kind of changing one meal at a time, maybe replacing that your breakfast with something that that is, you know, fits your goals um, rather than like saying I'm switching my whole day starting now. Uh, so, that, you know, I think that's probably the, the biggest advice. And like it, it could kind of take different shapes. It could be that you're just going to eat your plant-based diet on one day a week or something, and you're going to do it perfectly that day, and then gradually you add more of those days. Lots of ways you can do it, um, but but overall, just the theme for me is like, be be easy, go gentle on yourself, easy on yourself, uh, and and go slowly. And that's not just Matt's perspective. Um, you, you mind if I just chime in? And that's not just Matt's perspective. Um, statistics show that the, the 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 progressive step, the small incremental changes are most likely to uh, be ones that you stick with for the long term, you know, rather than making a uh, decision immediately overnight and, and hoping that's going to be something you're still doing 5, 10, 20 years down the road. That's not necessarily the case. There have been uh, studies on this. Uh, in fact, even with Vegan, Vegan Strong, we did some uh, uh, national polls on this, uh, surveying thousands of people. And, and people come to a plant-based diet for, for health reasons specifically, uh, kind of and that's not necessarily ego or selfish reasons, but that's what brings them there for health reasons. And if you make some small incremental changes uh, that you can adapt to over time, you're more likely to stick with, stick with it for the long haul and therefore reap the benefits of a plant-based diet for the long haul as well. And as much as we'd all like to change overnight uh, for our own benefit of like just all of a sudden getting super healthy and fit and happy overnight, uh, it, that doesn't always work for everybody. And so one thing that I like to encourage people to do is to determine what your favorite foods are. Like, what are your favorite plant-based foods? Like, really uh, be aware of those. And if you can have those at your disposal, if you can have them uh, close by in your kitchen, in your pantry, uh, on your counter, like like Brian Wendell or Robbie Barbero, uh, big racks of fruit, whatever it is that moves you, those are the foods that you're going to eat. And, uh, and our good friend, Chef AJ, when discussing some of these temptations of junk food and such, uh, she says, if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. And that's, that's unequivocally true. Uh, w when I, when I get some non-dairy ice cream, you know, vegan ice creams and all these things, and I, you know, I'm not going to touch them for a long time, but you know, willpower can only last for so long. And then I, I just want it. It's there. I paid for it. It's, it's not going to eat itself. It's wasted money if I don't. And then I do that. But we do that with collectively as a society with, uh, with convenience foods, with chips and with cookies and with snacks and all of that, when really what we're really seeking are those, those, those pleasure senses from foods like, like mango and raspberries and blueberries and pineapple, uh, foods that, that have that sweet taste that we're drawn to. Um, but, th but this decision also comes with vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, water, and fiber. And then all of a sudden, oh, that's how that fits into my active lifestyle. That's how it supports my recovery after exercise. That's where I get the energy from to go put my shoes on and go out the door for a walk in the first place. And so that's what I'm really, really big on, understanding the foods you're eating and why you're eating them and then making those conscious decisions so then you get the right foods in front of you at the right times and it nourishes and fuels you to become the best version of yourself.